to Cadell Cuisine. We are gonna do a really fun one today and make some birria tacos. This traditionally, this meal is made with goat. I didn't have goat available, so I'm gonna show you how to make it with beef. It's a really, really flavorful recipe. I'm gonna show you how to make a crock pot version of this recipe, especially because this can be a really easy way to get a lot of really amazing flavors over a longer period of time with minimal work involved, but the flavor of this really, really helps. So I'll show you a little bit of how I build those flavors with this, and then we'll go into how to make the birria tacos themselves, or those beautifully colored tortillas with the melted cheese and the crunch all around the side. And then at the end you get to dip that into your consomme or into the soup part of it and it's delicious. So we'll go ahead and start the recipe now. Grab a tortilla. Let's eat. Let's start off with toasting our guajillo chiles. I've already had the pan on and nice and warm on a medium heat. I'm making sure to flip these often so they don't burn. While those get toasted, I'm gonna focus on salting all of the meat, making sure to hit every side of it. But taking some time to go check in on the chiles as well. I don't want these to burn. That'll make a bitter flavor. Adding in the ancho chiles now as well. And doing the same thing with these chiles where I'm keeping an eye on them, making sure that they don't burn. If they do burn on you and they get bitter, go ahead and toss those out and start again. While I'm waiting on those, I'm adding the pepper to the meat here. Uh, this guy seems like he's just about ready. He's toasted but not burnt. Set him off to the side there. Finishing off the seasoning for my meat as I wait for those chiles. And when those are all ready to go, you're gonna get some boiling hot water. Covering that all over the chiles. Go ahead and put a lid or a plate over that and let them get steamy. It'll soften it up. At this point, I wanna make sure that this pan is really hot and oiled up before I add in the meat. This will really help with the browning process. All of those sizzles are a great sign. It's really getting the meat to the point that I want it to. And I'm not gonna flip it until I can tell that it's easy to flip and browned on that side don't want to flip prematurely. I'm really trying to get that brown color on every single side, even on the edges there. This will really help the flavor for the birria. At this point I'm getting my crock pot ready. I want to set it on a low setting and I want 8 to 10 hours. I really feel like this helps the flavors if I can do this at a low setting and for a longer amount of time. If you're running low on time, you can do it at a higher setting for a smaller amount of time, but you really want to make sure that you save all of that oil and put that in there along with it. I'm going to get some of my garlic ready to go. I'll link this little uh, garlic peeler press thing for you. And once that's all ready to go, we'll get the blender going and start it with the rest of the ingredients. Make sure to add in the oregano and the thyme. These are cloves. I want to add in about one or two of them. I'm going to do two because these are a little bit older. I want to make sure I get all of that flavor. And this cinnamon stick is a little bit thinner, so I'm gonna do half a cinnamon stick. If you have a thicker one, go ahead and do a fourth of that. My two bay leaves. A little bit of salt for flavor. And then some beef bouillon powder. If you've got a paste or anything like that, you can use that as well. 
While I set that off to the side, I'm checking on the chiles, making sure that they're soft, that the water really soaked through. Setting them off to the side. And I really want to save this water because it's got all of that flavor from the chiles. So I'm going to strain this to make sure that I don't get any of those seeds in there. The seeds will make for a really bitter flavor, so I don't want to do that. Now I'm going to take the guajillo pepper and sort of dissect it, get all of those seeds out, the veins, the parts that's in the middle. I want to take that out. This isn't something I'm going to add into the paste. And you can do that with all of the chiles here. If a seed or two falls in there, it's not a big deal. We're just trying to avoid all of them falling in. You can now blend that. It'll be like a paste. It'll look something like this here. Now I'm gonna add some boiling water. This will help for it to become a little bit less of a paste and more of a creamy consistency. And now we're ready to pour that in. And once that's all poured in, I wanna remember that in the blender we have tons of great flavors. So I'm gonna use more of that water to get all of that off to the sides, shake it up a bit, and then make sure to add that in with the crock pot. I don't wanna lose those flavors. It's some really great stuff happening in there. So make sure that goes in the crock pot. Can move some of the meat around and get it ready for its cooking time. About eight to 10 hours into it, it should look something like this. It's nice and broken apart. All of the flavors have really gone in, so I'm ready to make the tacos. I like to cook my tortillas first, make sure that they are not super soft or bendy. Once I've cooked those, I'm gonna take the consomme, some that I've gotten from the crock pot there, put it in a bowl that's big enough for a tortilla to kind of dip in. My pan is heating up and it's ready for this tortilla to get, get dipped in just a bit. We want all those flavors in there. And if the pan is hot enough, then go ahead and start. I'm using pepper jack cheese, it is my favorite. I'm just gonna do a thin layer of that and spread it all around, hopefully as evenly as possible. Doing the same thing with the top part of the tortilla Dipping that in, making sure I get all of those flavors. And that's just gonna go right on top there. Pulled out some of the virya meat. Now that the cheese is nice and melted, it's ready for a flip, this beautiful crust there. Adding some of that birria. A little bit more of that pepper jack cheese. This will help bind the taco together. I like to add a little bit more of the consomme in the taco. You don't want to overdo it with this, it could get it soggy, but just enough to add some flavor. And you are ready to sort of flip it and get it onto a plate there. I'll go through that process again to short, sort of show you a little bit of how that looks. And remembering that these tortillas that you're using, you've already cooked. Now I'm adding in thinly diced onion, a little bit of cilantro. This really helps kick off those flavors for this taco. And go ahead and repeat the process for the rest of your tacos. Sometimes I add some of that consomme on the very top part of it and let those juices kind of seep in. You can never go wrong with too many juices there. Just careful to do this just at the very end. So your birria tacos should look something like this. And now you're ready to add some lime and enjoy. You can dip that in the consomme and you have some delicious birria tacos.
thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. You really can't go wrong with this one. If you really want to get the flavors to go to an extra level because you want to just do a little extra, do this recipe, everything that you saw, stick that, once it's cooled down obviously, but stick that in the refrigerator and let it kind of sit in its own juices in the refrigerator overnight. If you do this in the morning and let that sit in the refrigerator for the next few hours until dinner time, the flavors get to another level. It's really, really delicious. And traditionally, this was a soup slash stew type meal that was enjoyed. And you're able to do the same thing that you would do for the tacos when it comes to the toppings. If you want to do that little diced onion, the cilantro, and that lime juice and enjoy it with tostadas or chips, it's delicious as a soup or a stew, which it was traditionally. So you can enjoy it in all sorts of different ways. I hope you have fun with this recipe. Go ahead and tag us if you do enjoy these tacos on Instagram or Facebook or wherever it is that you follow us. And we appreciate all of your support. If you really enjoyed this one, give us a like button just to show us that this is something that maybe you want to see more of these traditional Mexican recipes. And as always, if you'd like to subscribe to support us to make more of these videos, we would greatly appreciate it. And a Scooby Doo. Okay, beforehand, let it do it. Let it do its thing. Let it do its thing is what I meant to say. Okay, one more time. I don't. No go ahead. No kips. Just to get the juices flowing. Okay.